you know, I went from the, the candy man to the adult candy man. So uh, it's, uh, the nickname still works. It still fits. It's certainly early, um, but, you know, the, the way the, the companies are run are, are entirely different, um, you know, which is good, fine, different, um, nothing wrong with that. It's just a matter of, of trying to continue to figure out what, uh, what the pluses and the minuses all are, you know. Uh, certainly there are some, some pluses of uh, the new team with RCR and, and the management and everything else that's going on there. I enjoy working with a whole group, whether it's the office or uh, the competition side. It's been really fun. Uh, and then, um, obviously, too, uh, the JGR side had its pluses as well. So uh, just trying to incorporate all the stuff that I've been accustomed to and been around for the last 15 years. And, uh, you know, not all of the processes and procedures that I'm used to, but uh, definitely trying to work my way into what RCR is and how they work first and then just say, but have you guys thought about doing something X, Y, Z like this? And so... Um, I think it's been pretty good thus far, but uh, Richard's been great, um, Tori, everybody, and um, you know, looking forward to a uh, long relationship here. All right, let's come up here to Jerry, and then we'll go to Mike. Oh, man. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires.net. Um, oh. Oh. I think that's the checkered. Wow. What are you watching? Brexton's racing right now. Oh, okay. Well, wait. <laughs> I think that's the check. He won by point zero eight over the second place kid. So where is he racing? about that much, <laughs> huh? Where is he racing? Yeah, where's he? Uh, they're over the same place Keelan is right now. They're in uh, Citrus County Speedway, over just south of uh, Ocala. So, yep, he just won. Nice, Congrats. cool. All right, thanks. <laughs> so. With, uh, now with, I can focus forward. <laughs> Sorry, I was a little sidetracked. With the new season, new sponsors, things you, you know, you're used to working with this particular one, uh, you know, in the past mainly. I mean, there's been some other, you know, companies that run, but you've got Cheddar's, you've got all these other three kinds of different things. How is that dynamic for you? And I heard that you went into Cheddar's and you know, were kind of scoping out the menu to see what your next, what your official Cheddar's meal was going to be. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been fun. Um, like I said, the management side of, of RCR has been great, and that's been a part of, um, you know, all the sponsorship groups and things like that that I've been getting around and, uh, and meeting and, and spending some time with. So um, certainly been uh, really great to, to meet all of those folks. And, um, you know, I went from the, the candy man to the adult candy man. So... Uh, <laughs> It's uh, the nickname still works. It still fits. So, you know, certainly, um, you know, looking forward to the relationships with with all these guys and, and girls and and teams of people. But, um, you know, with with three chief, thankful for them for returning and, and um, Alsco and, and Cheddar's um, Lenovo. Just uh, excited to be able to, to have some people that have jumped on board that are that are willing to to uh, race with Kyle and um, have a chance to go out there and hopefully reward them by winning and uh, going to victory lane. All right, go over to the middle with Mike. Mike Embry, NBC Sports. Kyle, speaking of Sunday's odds, um, Mark Martin, Rusty Wallace, Terry Labonte never won this race. Now you and, Mar and Martin have had long runs without it. Do you think it's mostly circumstantial, or, or is there some dynamic that's going on there? Um, I mean, yeah, definitely uh, circumstantial. I, I think the, the whole thing kind of changed, I don't know, probably 2012, 13-ish, where it just became a complete disaster and a total wreck fest uh, at the end. You know, before that, I felt like there was times where there were some good races, uh, some good racing. You had to be a fast car. You had to have a good handling car. Um, you know, you had to put yourself in the right spot at times, and it was a bit of a chess match, um, you know, but... Um, I'm sure Denny can come in here and say, no, I've won three of them in that time frame, and it's not luck, you know. So um, he's just been fortunate at, at being in the right place at the right time and making the right moves. And I've always just kind of been the one that kind of waits and, like, sees everything kind of happen, and then I try to go, you know, 10 to go. Um, but sometimes that's too late, you know, and I'm, I'm not in the right spot by that point. So I kind of mess myself up. But um, overall, um, you know, the, the last – few years I have not watched 10 years in a row of footage but I'm going to guarantee you there's not very many cars finishing and uh, there's a lot of wrecks happening especially last lap crashes um, you know from the lead guys are getting crashed so uh, it happens 
being that you know, you've had uh, tough luck here, do you feel as if you know maybe this is your opportunity? Being it's the seventy fifth anniversary, do you feel as if you look at this race in a way that in a negative way, or do you feel as if you know you still have a positive attitude about it? No, I mean you just come in here and treat it as it's if any other race. Um, you know, there's there's great opportunity to be able to win the race, and you put yourself in the right spot, and you can. Uh, it's just a it's not happened yet for me. So, um, you know, it's it's obviously a, a difficult race to win. Uh, there's a lot of different winners. Some guys, this is the only race they ever win. Um, other guys, they win it, you know, two, three times over again. So uh, it's just the, the Super Bowl of our sport. It's, it's hard to, uh, to accomplish this one, um, you know, and it, it's a race where you rely a lot more on different factors than you do just yourself. You go to a racetrack like California or the old Atlanta and places like that, a lot more driver is, uh, is involved in, in how, uh, how good you are or what your destiny will be, where here uh, a lot of your result can be in the hands of other drivers around you and circumstances around you. So that's just the nature of it. But, um, you know, we all have got the same, uh, same race to go out there and run in. And hopefully, uh, you know, as far as being positive about it, yeah, I, I would be positive about it. Just Having a new, fresh look and outlook on everything with uh, my new team and, and being with the eight, um, it's it's exciting for me, anyways. So uh, I would love nothing more than to, to win the Daytona 500 with RCR and Chevrolet and 3G and everybody to um, you know really um, put an exclamation point on the off season and, and what this year will hopefully bring. Zach Sterniolo, NASCAR.com. I'm just curious, like what, how much of a reset this move is for you <clears throat> mentally? Um, you know, obviously you're going back to the Xfinity series, uh, with, with college racing as well, that you're the cup teams, a two car team, as opposed to this four car powerhouse, uh, where you spent the last 15 years, how much of this all has been just this mental reset for you? Yeah. I mean, a lot of it is, um, you know, there's just a, a big reset in general, obviously with, um, you know, joining forces with, with RCR and Austin, uh, thankful for the opportunity. Looking forward to the many sponsors that we have to working with all of them. And, and yeah, I mean, it's just a, a fresh outlook. And, and it's nice to, um, you know, be in a place where uh, you're wanted um, and you're accepted. And, um, you know, having that chance of just going and racing again is, is going to be fun. So we've done a little bit of that already with the, the Coda race that we ran and then the, the test that I had. Um, you know, spending some time with, with Austin doing some stuff uh, off track has been pretty cool. So um we'll continue to to just evolve and get better and and hopefully you know rcr once again becomes a you know a powerhouse like it once was and um that's that's to win races and win championships and then also wanted to ask you about kevin harvick and and just what he a your relationship with him and how that's evolved throughout throughout the years but also what he's accomplished throughout uh, his time as well yeah he he finally grew up and um you know it's nice to have a relationship with other veteran type drivers. That's what we call each other, veterans, um, or just the old crowd. Um, he's got me by a few years, but um, you know it's still fun to um, you know mess with him a little bit. And um, he actually gave me a ride over here this morning, so uh, from the short track. So we rode together. Uh, it's kind of weird, right? Um, almost the days of thunder where we should have got our own rental cars. Um, <laughs> would have been a Ford versus a Chevy. That would have been funny. Um, but, uh, you know, just, yeah, his, him and I, have, him having Keelan, me having Brexton, and, um, you know, us having other things outside of just the racetrack and different things in life, like he mentioned about focusing on and, and what it'll teach you has certainly meant a lot to the both of us and, and how we, uh, you know, can relate and, and work with one another. And how is your brother doing this off season? I mean, obviously he's detailed his issues with, with still fighting the concussions, lingering effects of the concussion. How does he seem to you? How does he feel to you? Seems fine to me. Everything's day by day with him. Uh, he's very busy. I see him doing a lot of different things and, uh, and looking at his schedule and talking to some of the folks that are around him and he's somewhere doing something every single day. So he's, he's fine off the track. Everything's fine with, uh, as much as it can be inside of a bush's head anyway. Um, so he's good. Thanks. All right, let's go to Reed, and then we'll come over to Bruce. Uh, Reed Spencer with the NASCAR Wire. I'm just curious, why did you decide to um, resume your Xfinity Series career? And uh, was it sponsor-driven or missed the seat time? Or 
Um, actually, it was just the relationship that I grew over the, the time in which I was talking to the other teams and things like that through last year. Uh, talking with Chris Rice and Matt Collig, especially, uh, the relationship that, that we've developed and, and the communication and things that we had over that time frame, um, you know, when it came down to decision time and I had to let everybody know who wasn't the choice for going cup racing with, um, you know, I, I told them at that time, though, that I would, I would still love to drive for him and have a chance to be able to go race his cars. Uh, it just wouldn't be on Sunday. And so uh, they were gracious enough to allow me to run their Xfinity program. And uh, I'd love to go over there and, and help those guys out. And, um, you know, I feel like they're really, really, really close on right on the brink of being the force to be reckoned with in the Xfinity series. And I'd love to help carry that, uh, that torch to the next level. Okay, let's go over here to Bruce. Bruce Meyer with Speed Sport. Um, a lot of times they say a change of scenery does some good. Uh, what is the one thing that you've experienced by having that change of scenery at this point in your career? Oh, it's it's a lot. Um, just all the things that I've mentioned so far. I mean, the the difference of the competition side and how they do things at RCR is entirely different than uh, than JGR, the, the management side, as well as com completely different. So, um, you know, differences are, are fine. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, exploiting the, the really good pieces of all of that and sometimes the not so good pieces of that and making it all good. Uh, you know, so I feel like there's room for me to help um, the group that we're with learn from the group that I came with and vice versa where I'm not really going to be teaching the old group, but you get my point. Um, it's just a matter of, of I really enjoy working with Randall so far. Communication with him has been, been great. Um, you know, we're always back and forth. We about talk every day, so that's been really good, which is a little bit different than, um, you know, my past couple of relationships. But, um, yeah, it's uh, so far so good. And although it's happened once before, this uh, Sunday you're going to go out on the track and you're going to run a Daytona 500 and Kurt's not going to be in it. So is that kind of an odd feeling for you? Yeah, no, when I saw the the layouts of my cars for this year that just had the bush on there, I was a little I was like, "Hey, you guys forgot my first name." Um well, there's there's not another one out there, so uh we don't have to run the first name anymore. I, I don't know if anybody would have ever noticed if they would have just left it on there, but um, you know, yeah, it's 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 uh it's a little weird to to see just the last name on there, you know. So, um, you know, maybe I can get uh Fox to fix the broadcast where instead of it just saying KY Bush, it'll just say Bush. <laughs> All right, let's go here to the middle. Kaibu. Get rid of Kaibu. Kyle Dahl, how is the frontstretch.com? You just described that you had a really good relationship with the college guys and you built that up. I know you haven't raced with them yet, but can you kind of compare that to teams of the past and how much of a tight knit group they are? Like their attitude just seems really happy go lucky they just seem really close together yeah no i again yeah i haven't worked with them in a competition nature yet but um you know super super appreciative of the opportunity i've i've just talked with uh my crew chief a little bit alex over there we did a seat fitting and getting some stuff kind of squared away and getting ready because i've been gone all this week and obviously the car's got to be about ready to go when when we all leave for the west coast swing because we're out i'm out there for the whole time so um, I get to run Vegas and Phoenix, which are back to back early in the year. And, um, you know, there's a lot of preparation going on. So those guys are digging in, working hard. Looks like they got about, I don't know, 16 cars about ready to go for the start of the year, whether it's this week and all the way through the West Coast swing. So uh, they're, they're punching them out and knocking them down for sure. But um, yeah, looking forward to, to racing and, and working alongside uh, AJ. Uh, I know how, uh, how good he is on the road course stuff, obviously. So um, you know, and then Justin, um, I don't know that I'll really race against AJ or Justin cause we'll be running in the same car, but obviously working with Chandler, who's a rookie up and coming new to the Xfinity series. Uh, he was at KBM for the last two seasons. So, uh, that'll be good to see him. And then Daniel Hemrick always enjoyed working with Daniel when we were at, uh, JGR together and, and who he is and, and, uh, you know, watching him years ago coming up through the late model ranks same way I kind of came up through and and the teams that he was with and the experience and um, uh, you know the success that he had was always fun to see so a lot of guys that have kind of been around already a little bit so it'll be nice to just race with them but yet also against them 
and following that, uh, they've also been known to, especially with the super speedway races, they've been known to finish second just to, for the sake of helping their teammate win. Mm -hmm. It's all about the team. Can you see yourself finishing second to, say, Justin Haley or Chandler Smith in the Xfinity Series race Thank on Saturday? Thankfully, I don't choose restrictor plate racing because uh, that didn't bode well for me the last time uh, I ran an Xfinity um, super speedway race. So I'll stick to the ones where drivers matter and, um, you know, be able to go out and race, you know, Vegas, Phoenix, Charlotte, Watkins Glen, and somewhere else, Darlington. So, uh, yeah, I only get five, so it shouldn't be that hard to remember. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, you know, those are places that I'm kind of excited about and getting the opportunity to be able to go out there and, and help their program at those tracks and, um, you know, go out and hopefully race for wins, get uh, some trophy hunting done. All right, so we've run out of time. Uh, Fantastic. Kyle, appreciate you coming in. <laughs>